among you here are mothers with children in school, high school or college or elementary? Raise your hands. I want to see who are mothers with children still in school. Higher, higher, higher. Marame, marame. Good. Listen well. Walang awa ya. How many of you are mothers with children in Lasal? Lasal. Oh, mga Lasalista. Okay. Very good. Ateneo, raise your hand. Ateneo. IS, IS, IS. Meron din ano? British school, British, British school. Mothers from British school. I see one. Who else? Two. Oh, how nice to see. I love young mothers who are here in spite of their schedule. They're here with us. Thank you so much. You read my mind. Okay. The reason I ask if you are mothers with children, I know your minds are always with your children, diba? Right? Now, I am a mother myself, and uh, I have children as well, and they're already quite of age, actually. Ay, password. Kala ko. Sarili kong password, buti na lang I know. Okay. So let me introduce to you my children. Okay. My children uh, range from the age of 25 to 32. Is it there now? Okay. Um, if you look at the photo, the boy on your right, he is a director. He does commercials for uh, Del Monte, Tobleron, and, and he does short films. So he's just uh, up and coming. He's not yet there, but pray for him. He's single. And uh, the lady in white, siempre ako yon. Wag mo na siyang pansinin. My ever happy husband, Joby, who keeps me happy, is in the middle. Our eldest daughter, Sandra, is a product developer. And uh, she used to work with Avon Philippines for five years. That's where she got her training. Then she worked with Sunny's, Sunny Specs and Sunny's Face. And she developed the Sunny's cosmetic line. So, but then she resigned because she wanted to develop her skill as a product developer. You know, she wants, that's her line. Eh? So right now, she's studying. Pray for her. She's abroad. She worked 10 years to be able to save for her master's program. And the last boy on your left is my AB psychology major. And the reason he took psychology was to psychologize me. <laughs> but in the end, we allow our children to be what they want to be. And today, he is a choreographer. And he was um, just abroad competing. And he's back today, just today, right now. So you see, we have children. They're growing up. We want them to be who we want them to be. But in the end, they must be whom God chooses them to be. And so, wherever they're happy, we are happy. Agree? You're all eating. I'm not eating it. <laughs> Look at me naman, minsan, minsan. Huh? I took uh, no, time to be matching with the program. So... Here we go. We're in a topic that I love. And it's about decluttering. It's about simplifying. It's about organizing your life. Am I a perfect organizer? No. Am I super OC clean? No. But I am not the type who has like a capsule, so-called wardrobe. No, because I like to mix and match. So I'm not the perfect decluttered person, but I've learned the art. Now, you all have Netflix, right? Meron kayong Marie Kondo, right? Eh, yung condo niya maliit. Kaya kailangan very simplified. Pero the Filipino home is very different, right? So I am going to give you a look into how to declutter your life in a simple way. And hopefully in 2019, we are going to be less messy, more organized, and more free to do things that are more important than fixing and fixing and cleaning and cleaning. Tama po ba? So, uh, do we have foreigners in the group? I speak several languages. So, do we have the British? No British. What about the Scottish? No Scottish. French? Ah, French. Can you understand English? 
I oh, see. Okay, so stick to English. I will not ask. Italian, Italian. Ay salamat. Di magbisaya na lang ta, huh? hmm. Okay. One of the most common habits most of us fall into, and many don't call it a habit, is hanging on to things that we love. Yes. I hear something over there. It's okay. And sometimes letting go is difficult, right? Kahit sa love life, letting go is difficult. What if I told you right now, Michelle, I want to go to your house and I want to see your bedroom, especially your side table. No? No? Ayaw nga. Okay, 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 okay. Ayaw nga. What about if I ask the one of you in this table, can I go to your home today, right now, after the seminar? Can I, can I just visit? But can I open the room that you never allow people in? Other you don't have that. Okay, you can now leave the room. You don't need this seminar. <laughs> okay, can I look under your beds? <sighs> okay, I think we have to change the title. Well, anyway, most of us, before we have visitors, we want to be told, right? Because somehow, we have things we want to keep out of the way and allow our visitors not to see. And that is very common. How many of us have gone to a mall? We just, we just want to go to the mall. You know, you're just gonna buy, ne, what? Biogesic and Mercury or Watsons. So you go, you buy Biogesic, but when you're passing, you see, Mm, Uniqlo. Ay, naku, ganito, ganyan. Pag uwi mo, you look like this. No plan, no budget, no list, but we go home with bags full of what? Not naman junk, nice stuff. But we are so scared to show it to our husband. So we hide it muna in the car, tapos pag nag siya, we bring it up. Diba? How many of us, how many of us are given gifts? Listen, ladies, when you give gifts, do you really think about it? Or do you give a gift that you do not like? You must give something you love because it speaks of your love, diba? But what if somebody gives you something like this? Sabi niya, Cindy, sana itago mo yan. That's the first artwork of my son, Pateri. Eh, siyempre, anong gagawin ko, di ba? I will keep it. But definitely, I will not give it away as a gift. What do you do with things that are given to you that you don't love? Things you have, but you have some sentimental attachment. What do you do with them? Do you hide them in one room and tell everyone, this room is no longer a bedroom, it's a stock room. It happens, okay? But let me define. What is clutter? What is clutter? Why do we talk about the clutter? So let me say it simply. Clutter is simply defined as what? Delayed decisions. Why do I say that? Why is clutter simply called delayed decisions? I'll give you an example. A letter comes, you open it, it's the BPI bill card, credit card. You open it, you look at the deadline, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you put it on your desk. And then you get a wedding invitation, sabay, sa mail. You open it, you read it, ay ano ang daming ninong ninang, ano ba ito? Then you put it there, beside. And then you receive a gift, because it's, maybe somebody wanted to thank you for something. You open the wrapper, and you look at the ribbon, and you say, hmm, this ribbon is so nice. I will keep, wait, but where will I put it? Here muna. Ay, the wrapper, I cannot break the wrapper. Kailangan, dandahan, i-roll yo, fold the wrapper. Who's like that? Ang dami natin ganun, di ba? You want to save the wrapper, you save the ribbon, and minsan, when you open the envelope, you say, ang ganda ng card. Puputulin ko to, gagamitin ko. Yung envelope. A sticker ko, I will recycle. So now you look at the desk with all the delayed decisions, diba? So, example, a letter, an invitation, a gift, a phone message. 
you write it down, or you have a broken lamp you want to fix, you bring it to the garage, but it's there in a one year. The lamp is standing there in your garage one year. It's not yet fixed. So it is delayed decisions. Do you understand what I'm saying? You do not attend to the issue right away. Now, can I just check with you about my sound? I feel like I'm shouting, am I? Oh, okay. My husband always tells me, kasi that, eh, are you shouting? I will tell him, 300 women said no. <laughs> so, when you delay your decision, many times, this is what happens to your desk. One week, you will declutter, di ba? Super linish yung desk. One week. After two weeks, parang may gumagapang. And all of a sudden, it's there again, di ba? You open it. So let me, let me ask you, what do you do? You know, your kids are grown up. Who have adult kids like mine? Malaki na. They're not even home all the time. Many of you. How many of you hold on to their drawings? <laughs> Dami. Okay, the first drawing, di ba? Yung mga, mom, I love you. Ayan, mga ganyan, no? Mga... Lahat, you hold on, you put it in a folder. Why do we do that? Why? Because we say, it's precious to us. And one day, I will give it to them in their wedding day. <laughs> you know, I have a folder before. Of all, I am a homeschooler. I was a homeschooler. I homeschooled my kids from elementary, kinder, up to second year high. Okay, don't worry, they graduated naman. So... I'm not a bad teacher, but I was never paid by my principal, my husband. So I'm collecting for life. <laughs> anyway, so things like this, Tiba, what do you do? I know you have it. I know you have that. How many of you, in fact, by the way, we're going to have a few games. Patty, we're okay, no? We're okay. We're going to have games. This is interactive. You remember in McDonald's, if you bring your kids there for a birthday, there's a game like, bring me, bring me. Okay. Magaling kayo dyan? You better be awake, okay? And when I say, go, go, cannot be like, you know, sana hindi kayo nag heels kagaya ko. All right. Now, listen to me. How many of you cut the first hair of your baby and put it in a zip? Hindi pa ako tapos. nag na ng hand. First haircut. Ah, nasaan na yon? Nasa bahay. Who brought? Ayan ha? Wait lang. That's not shit. Umbilical cord. Sino nag-collect nun? Oh my gosh. Okay. Do you know what you can do with yan umbilical cord na yan? I want you to do this. Dip it in 18 karat gold. And have a jeweler make it a pendant. Oh, di ba? At least useful. Okay, first game. Ready? Bring me either a haircut of your baby in your handbag, an umbilical cord, or something as unique as that. Something as unique as that. Appendix. First tooth. The tooth that fell, do I have someone willing to admit? Are you standing to get coffee or coming to win the prize? <laughs> okay, so obviously nobody brought the first haircut. The first tooth, um, oh, ang babait nyo. But my first game is really this. I want those of you who are matapang to admit that they have Bawal yung bayong, ha? Pag may bayong, no. It must be the real handbag. Who has here the heaviest bag? The judges on the table on the far left will be Patty and Gina. I will... They, not everybody, ha? I'm not saying largest. I'm saying heaviest. Go to Gina in the count of ten. You have a prize. Nine... Eight, nandiyan. Seven, I'm counting very, very, very slow. Seven, six, 
Nagre-repeat pa ako ng number. Five. Uy, hindi yan heavy. Four. Ang dami. Okay. Three. Two. Dapat, Gina, dapat heaviest, ha? Don't put your gold bars there. Two. Last two counts. And final number is one. Okay. While they are fighting, while they are discussing over there, ang marami ng tinanggihan, too light, too light. You should be happy. Ladies, are you, are you meeting new people in your table? Okay, here's, while they're, oy, nagbabakbakan. Oy, wag naman. Who are here visiting CCF Makati for the very first time? I want you to be proud and stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Yeah. Can you please? Woohoo! All these ladies. I'm so happy. Stay up, stay up, stay up. The reason I want you to stand is because I want you to look at your group mates, look at her face, remember her, get her number, make her kulit to come back next week. Okay. All right. Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. I'm so happy you're so many. Magaling kayo mag-invite ang Makati. Is it because the flagship Uniqlo is beside? Yes? Mm-hmm. Okay. That helps. All right? So, who have husbands here? Husbands na makal ma ma hoarder, hoarder, hoarder. Oh, hoarding cars, hoarding tools, hoarding broken tires. Wow, double arms pa. Okay, husbands should have been here. Do you agree? There should be a men's decluttering event. Why? Many times, women, when we try to declutter, and then nandiyan na sa garahe, sino naghalong kat? Asawa. Many of our husbands have their own man cave. Man cave meaning do not enter, di ba? Ganito sila. They look like this. They say, do not enter, do not touch, all of these are mine. So, let me define very quickly, what is clutter? So you're saying, okay, Cindy, does it mean everything I have is clutter? No. But here is the definition. What is clutter? Clutter is anything that is, listen to this, it's been with you a long time, but it is unfinished. Yung macrame mo, yung cross-stitch mo. Yung mga painting nyo. All those hobbies, crochet, knitting. You all have ambition, right? But then you begin and you never finish. That's clutter. What else? Anything unused. A year has passed. You brought the Dyson supersonic hair dryer. Kaya mahal, mahal. You bought the Dyson polisher or vacuum, but you never opened it. But I love Dyson, huh? don't think so. If I can afford, I'll buy. I'm just using it as an example. Kasi baka you own Dyson, you'll get mad at me. No, I love Dyson. Okay, now, anything what? Unresolved. Anything unresolved. So obviously, clutter can be things that we do not see. Clutter doesn't mean to be things you see alone. These are things that you haven't fixed up in your life. That is part of clutter. We're getting there. In fact, that is the most stressful clutter to me, personally. By the way, I hope none of you, by the way, you can just lock the doors. Bawal po umalis bago mag-12. Or else you have to pay for all the food. I'm just kidding. I don't own CCF. But really, could you stay till 12? Because there's something, something amazing in the end I want you to listen to. Now, this includes anything physical, mental, even emotional, and that is clutter. Do you get me now? So why is clutter so uh, like damaging? Why is it so damaging? Let's give you, let's give me, I'll give you some more, huh? Clutter is anything that does not contribute in what? Any positive way. Meaning, you may have the most beautiful vase, but palagin nababangga, 
Or when you look at it, parang you remember your mother-in-law whom you don't like. Uh, I mean, I don't mean to be negative, but there are certain things in your house that don't make you happy, right? But you hold on to it because it's mahal, sayang, where will I put it? It was given to you, it was inherited. I have a friend who inherited everything from two households, her mother-in-law and then her own mom. She got everything. Her house is so full and she's not happy, okay? Anything what? What else? It will not contribute to your long-term plans, meaning you have things that hinder your planning. How do, how do I explain this? Example, you want to go on a vacation, on a long vacation, but you're worried about leaving your house. Why? There are too many valuable things inside. But a long-term goal is really to be able to travel and enjoy life with your husband. But you stay home because you're very worried about security. What else? It doesn't contribute to your personal growth. That's clutter. If it's there, but it doesn't benefit you. It's just there. That's clutter, okay? And it doesn't give you a peaceful heart and mind. Now, I want you to picture your home right now, your home, your bedroom, and your side table. You all know your night table. That's where we make tambak everything. Ilan ang night cream dun? Ilan ang eye cream dun? Lahat ng eye cream. Nanjan, lahat ng night cream. Serum. Ang dami na, no? May serum, may emulsion, may ganito, may ganyan. Na I get so confused. I grew up a pond's baby. You know, I was very young. My mom raised eight daughters, and she said, each one will get Pond's cream. Clean your face every night and every morning with Pond's and wash with ivory soap. That was how we grew up. I had a very simple mom. She was a teacher, a nutritionist. She taught in uh, American school in Cebu. I grew up in the province, so Pond's was my product. Dapat endorser pala ko ng Pond's. But overage na. Anyway, so, who among you cannot let go of clothes that give you memories? <sighs> Yung memories ng first prom mo. Prom. Or the de boot. Yung de 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 boot dress, no? So, you cannot let go of it. Andyan pa rin talaga. Ano? Tingnan mo naman. Diba? Many of us have clothes in our closet. Parang when we look at it, ay, yung bewang ko 21 dati. Ngayon, kahit hita ko, hindi yan. You know? But we leave it there and we say, maybe my niece will want it one day. No. I promise you, she will hate you for life. So, we are going to have to discuss what to do with dresses like that. So, with all the things we gather, and with all the things we delay, and with all the things we don't want to do anything about because I'd rather go out, you know, I don't want to attend to the mess or I don't want to answer. Many times we have rooms that look like this. And these are real life rooms. You know, I have decluttered homes because I used to do it professionally. Like if I had a friend who moved from a very big house in Alabang and she downsized. You know, she wanted to go to a townhouse because all her kids were big. And we had to, she was six bedroom, two story home, six-car garage house. It took me one month to declutter and to do an estate sale. But it was so enjoyable. Why? She was letting go. She was letting go of so many things. You know, I had to go through a room that looked like this. Bills, payments made for past 20 years. Why do you keep the bill? Oh, diba? But, ah, uh, guilty rin tayo. We're also guilty, right, of these things. What about things? You know, like, hey, nako, this, this, this basket, I can still use it. Let me put it there, put it here. And suddenly, there's a visitor coming, right? And it's all over the house, so you push it, you push it, you push it. And you tell the helper, hoy, isusi mo yung kwarto na yan, ha? Sabihin mo, special guest room yan. Okay? Pala ganyan. So, we have to be careful. So, clutter is often also the what if things. What if? What if? You know why clutter becomes clutter? Because you always say, what if I need it later and then I cannot find it now? Example, you have broken screen. 
So what do you do? You change the screen, right? Many husbands will not throw the old screen. Tanungin mo yung husband mo, Honey, bakit nandiyan pa yan? Ay, you can never tell. We might need it for artwork, for mga ganyan-ganyan. Okay. Or what about the sink? You know, the faucet that you changed because it was leaking. So you put a brand new faucet. And then when you went out to his toolbox, all the old faucets are there. <laughs> Honey, uh, why are those faucets there? Spare parts. Malemo, we will need the bolt, we will need the thing. So you know what? That is the what if. Or we are too lazy. Too lazy to do it now. And maybe we just we don't have a system. I just don't want to bother about fixing. If you go to my bedroom, it's neat, but don't open certain closets. There are things like that. So why even talk about clutter if everyone's guilty? Are we all guilty of some clutter? Yes. I agree. Now look at this picture. This is what happens when you throw something away. Somehow you have a dream that says, three weeks after now, you threw that away, you will need it. Diba? So he regrets. He regrets. So who has a side drawer like this? Yung mga instant, you know, dun muna yung charger ko, dun muna yung card ko, jan muna. Diba? I call it the dumping drawer. We all have that. So let me give you a saying that I came up with, okay? A cluttered life may not mean that you are messy or dirty. Clutter doesn't necessarily mean you are dirty. You're a dirty household maker. No, that you're a messy, no. It does not necessarily mean that. It can be that you are a very organized clutter bug, an organized hoarder and an organized collector. Why do I say that? Look how organized this ashtray collector is. <laughs> Meron siyang ashtray collection, pero tingnan mo naman, malinis, organized. But it's still, what? Unused? It has no positive value? It is not contributing to long-term goals? It's occupying space, right? What about this? How come when our pills are ubus na, we contemplate pa the bote. Hmm, itong bote ng jam, parang pwedeng vase. Ano, no, no? This jam, ang ganda ng shape. Pwedeng, ano, mug. Di ba? I can drink water from here. But ladies, there are some beautiful jars, I, I agree, that are really nice as drinking glasses. So if you are tempted to keep Keep them, but use them. I'll show you pictures later on. But this one, how many of you? Mga medicines. Parang feeling mo, gusto mo i-refill? Nang ano, kaya ano? Hairpin? Oh, kung ano-ano, okay. So, what about if you are a collector of dolls and teddy bears? Who loves to collect toys? Dolls. Who remembers the first doll that came out from a Shell commercial? It was called the Tammy doll. No? That's not my age group. Okay, Tammy doll was a really cute doll. It came out in a Shell commercial. And, and my dad was with Shell. And I remember, since we were eight girls, we all had Tammy dolls. They're like, they're like the Barbie dolls today, okay? But we didn't collect. Now, would you like to know the 10 signs of a cluttered life so that you know if you are guilty? Okay, let's go. 10 signs. Number one. You always say you need more space. You order cabinets, or you have cabinets made, or you want to build an extension, or you now rent a storage space. Kasi uso yan, ha? You, you rent a storage room somewhere in a building. You even if, you know, even if your circumstances are the same, you still want to build more space. Two. You lose or you cannot find things all the time. You always say, alam ko, it's somewhere here. Honey, where's that invitation? Wait, 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 I know it's somewhere here. And then you miss the wedding. <laughs> Number three, you have a wardrobe full of clothes. Ang dami daming clothes. But your husband always hears you say, honey, I have nothing to wear. Nothing to wear. And every time you pull out something from your closet, you have to say, Ay, ate, paplancha. 
Ma'am, na-plan siya yan kahapon, eh, pero nagusot eh, dahil sa closet ko. If your closet is like this, nothing will be ironed properly. Never. Right? Who has closets like this? Na very hard to pull out, very hard to put in. Gil. Okay, there's more closets. Now, closets are one of the hardest areas to declutter, but we will have a system for that. Okay, I'm moving a little faster now. Number four, you cannot find documents when you need them. You know you have that document. You know it's somewhere in the room. But because you're not organized, no filing system, you cannot find. Guilty? Okay. If you're guilty on the five items out of ten, please come see me right away for your therapy. <laughs> Number five, you often pay your bills late. Yan. Tapos tatawag sa BDO. <laughs> you know what? I, I never got the bill eh. Oh, liar. Ma'am, no, impossible. Electronic po yung bill. Nasa email nyo po. Ay, nahuli sa lie. When you do not know your deadlines, when you don't have a filing system, when you're not paperless, you cannot tell the bank you never got the bill. Just tell them, you know what? I'm so sorry, I'm so cluttered. I forgot to pay the bill because I can't find the bill. Can you please help me remove the penalty and finance charge? <laughs> Ma'am, pang tatlong beses na yan, three times na. Well, that happens, right? Okay, number six. Your stuff gives you stress. To the point that you and your husband, sometimes you argue na. You argue about it. One time, I went to the closet of my husband in the garage. Joby is one of the most organized men I ever met. When he married me, you know what? He says, since I have two things I have to teach you. Number one, when you put the toilet paper in, it has to come out like that, huh? Mm. Yes, Pa. Oh, Pa. At first day of marriage, Jan, so very respectful. Ano pa? And then the toothpaste, we always from the bottom, huh? Sa bahay ko, ganyan lang eh. From the bottom, flat, flat, flat. Okay. So I have to obey my husband, right? Very organized. To this day, to this day, I make sure all the toilet paper, all the toothpaste of everybody is... But then, I did not grow up that way. So if I obey, I'm not stressed. So my advice, just follow your husband, okay? Seven, you have so many things that you need that you now use another room for a purpose for what it was never made for. What are kitchens made for? Cooking. Cooking. But what did this lady do? <laughs> Ladies, come on. She is very clean. She is not messy. It's very organized, I must say. Shoes, bags. Ang ganda pa niya, di ba? What is the reason why we can call her a clutter bug? Because she has repurposed the kitchen. It has become something else. I'm exaggerating. I put the picture, but this is a real true picture in the in, um, in internet. But it's true. There are many rooms. You know, your, your, your guest will say, I need to go to the bathroom. Can I use that bathroom? Ah, no, no, no. You know why? Sira ang toilet. Dun ka na lang. Pero really, ang gulo gulo, di ba? Okay. Guilty. Number eight, you can no longer eat in your dining room or use a chair because somehow the dining room is filled with stuff. Maybe Christmas gifts and food you never opened. And so now a chair is no longer a chair. <laughs> you know that song? A chair, it's not a chair. Room pala room. Ah, even when there's no one sitting there, tama chair. Now, this chair has been re designed. It's now a filing cabinet. It's now a closet. It's now a coat rack. And it's really amazing. But many of us have a chair like this at home. I heard amen there. Wow. <laughs> That's very, very religious. But I know you meant yes. Now, what about nine? It stresses you to welcome unexpected visitors. And ten, you have no peace when you get home and when you see all the clutter. 
Sometimes you don't like to go home because you know you have to deal with it. Ah, you're taking pictures, sorry. Take it, take it. You have to deal with it that you're freaking out. Every time you come home, you become like a, you're in a bad mood. You're in a bad mood. And so what happens? You scream, you shout, you have problems, you scold the maid, you scold everybody. But can I let you just in on a little psychology of clutter? Why are we stressed when we see clutter? Now remember, it doesn't have to be a mess. Why can we be stressed when we have too many things? One day I visited a friend, and you know, I'm amazed, very, very organized, huh? But she had one room, a bedroom, just for bags. I'm not kidding. And I said, why? She says, you know, when your bags are in a closet, you forget you have those bags. But when they're displayed, all you have to do is look, color-coded, and choose. Organized, but stress. For me, very stressful. There are researches, and this is what I want you to hear very well. I'm checking my time. Okay, perfect. Researchers say and have proven that there, when you have physical clutter or too many things around you, it affects your productivity at work. It affects your way of thinking towards the negative. It, a cluttered desk in the office, a cluttered office, workplace, even a home affects your mood and affects your ability to work properly, physically. It slows you down, it stresses you, and it gives you moods. May mood swings. Kaya pala, parang naloloka yung iba. Okay? So, when I talk to corporate people, which I do corporate talks because my passion is an organized workplace. Why? When you own a company, what's your desire? That your people are productive, that they get along, that they're happy. And many reasons why they don't get along and they're unhappy is because if you go to their workplace, their desk, it shows a very decluttered mind, a cluttered mind. So when I do company talks for this, which is another side of my business, I really talk about how you can produce better employees and better marketing and better sales if you have an organized workplace. It's psychology. It has been proven. Now, when your closets are so full, when your handbags are so messy, when your night table is full, guess what happens to your brain? It releases a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol. What is cortisol? It's a natural byproduct. We produce it. When you're stressed, cortisol is released. That's how the body tries to maintain peace. Now, the normal way is that when you wake up, cortisol must be high. And then cortisol will decrease towards the end of the day so that you can sleep. Now, the problem with clutter all throughout your desk, all throughout your day, cortisol spikes. It doesn't go this way. It spikes stress. Spikes. It has been proven when they look at clutter, cortisol spikes. What happens when it spikes? Too much cortisol is produced. What happens at night? Insomnia, hypertension, long term. And you become overweight. Why? Because, what? It's true. Because when, see, do you know that stress leads to overweight? because of your cortisol spiking and holding on to whatever fat you have because it needs to revive itself. Ladies, I'm not joking. You want to lose weight? Declutter. Why? When you declutter, a sense of peace enters your home, your cortisol level drops, and you sleep better. It has been proven that messy surroundings in your homes, even in your cars, make you anxious and helpless. One study in America shows that because the cortisol level spikes many times in a day, your stress and anxiety spikes all throughout the day as well. Therefore, you deplete it. You deplete it and you deplete it. Now, I want you to see an expert of hormones and talk to them about cortisol and ask them, is it true that when I'm stressed throughout the day, 
I will have problems long term? And they will say, definitely yes. It will even not make you want to have, you know, love making. So, if you are complaining that your husband is not touching you anymore, maybe your room has to be decluttered. Para pagpasok niya, hindi siya stressed, and then he can make you calabit. So, it's about junk, all right? So, have you heard of this rule? The 80-20 rule? This is a true rule. The rule of thumb, and the principle is that. What's the total of that? 100. 100% 100 of everything you have, you only use 20. 20%. And you know, I have a very good way of gauging it. Talk to your labandera. You talk to your labandera and you ask her, Ate, yung mga damit ko ba every week na pinaplancha mo? Ay, ma'am, pare-pareho. Palagi naman yung itim, palagi yung puti, palagi ma'am. You wear the same clothes. You wear 20% of the clothes. So here's my question. Everybody knows Paula Abdul, right? So she's very organized, but she has a lot of things. Now, maybe because she's a star, right? So she has a closet like this. In fact, she's very proud of it. Her eyeglasses are there, her belts are there, her shoes are there. Now, I don't know who will inherit that when she goes, but she loves those things. It's organized. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, you may have many things. You want to be that way, it's fine. Now tell me, how does this look to you, this picture? Does it look family? Familiar? You know, these mugs that you don't know what to do with? Do you have a desk that's filled with pens? Then when you get a phone call and you need a pen to write, the pen naman doesn't work. <laughs> and then what do you do with the pen that doesn't work? You put it back in the mug. You do not throw it. Why? What enters here? I will go to National. I will replace it. So you have 20 million ball pens for replacement, which you never do. So practice throwing the pen. You know, I stick to one kind of pen, one time. I only carry one, which leads me now to the second contest. The second contest, nobody won the first. No collecting from each other. You can only get from your own handbag, OK? Bring me the most number of writing instruments from your bag. It can be pencil, an eyebrow pencil, bawal. <laughs> no. Pencil, ball pen, pencil pen, anything. If you have the most, please bring it right now. You will get a gift. The most writing instruments from the handbag. No collecting. No collecting from your friends. Honesty system. Okay, go na. Uy, ang dami niyan. Go, go. The, the most number of writing instruments. If you have less than 10, don't come anymore. Because I heard 10. Less than 10, bumalik na kayo. Gina, what's the highest so far? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, don't come if you have less than twelve. Fifteen is the highest. So all of you who have less than fifteen, I'm sorry, you can sit down now. My question is, why do you have fifteen? Maybe you're a writer, painter. Okay. But many of us have this. Do you know, while we're deciding, are you, do I have your attention? In 10, ilan, Patty? 22? Gosh. Clap for her. Congratulations. You are really a collector. I will talk to you later. Maybe you're a writer. You're sh huh? Sure, Tita, yeah. I don't mean to, you know, make fun of you. The highest number I got in one of my events was 35. And I asked her why. She said, you know, I just have this thing. I must always have all the colors. I just must, and this, in this pencil box must always be with me. So, okay lang. So, congratulations, congratulations. Now, 
What do you know you can do in 10 minutes? What if I said in 10 minutes you can declutter so many things? Would you like to hear what you can do in 10 minutes? In 10 minutes, you can go to that desk of yours and throw all the non-working ball pens. Promise. In 10 minutes, you can clean your kitchen counters of all the unnecessary small appliances. Why in your kitchen counter do you have the mixer, the toaster, and uh, everything when you don't really use it, right? Next, you can throw old letters in 10 minutes. You can pay your bills and throw them in 10 minutes. You can fix a bookshelf in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, try it. Put the timer on, you can clean. Now, I'm going to talk to you next about top 10 clutter. Top 10. Now, the top will be number one. And if you can guess what the number one worldwide clutter item in every home and office is, if you can stand up and shout it out to me, and you're correct, I think we still have a price. So if you're ready, in the count of three, two, one, stand up and say it. You said? Receipts. You said paper. Who said paper? You said paper. No, not just hotel paper, but you said paper, right? Who said paper? Loud. I heard it from here. Huh? Number one? Another one. Expensive magazines. But the real, huh? Books. Okay, the real, the real answer, because it falls under one category, is paper. And you can claim your price over there. Why paper? Paper is number one because it pertains to junk mail, files, newspaper, magazines, books, and photos. And paper is so dangerous. Why? When a house burns down, it burns faster when you have more books, papers, and magazines. It's a fire, what? Hazard. So try to go paperless, okay? Number two is, believe it or not, clothes. My daughter right now is taking a course called product development. And in her school, they are told about how clothes can never break down in the junk yards, in the, in the trash yards. Clothes don't deteriorate quickly. And they are number one, really, clutter of the earth. So she texted me and says, Mom, if you're going to buy anything, buy classic. Don't go buying everything there that will eventually, after one or twice, you don't, once or twice, you don't want to wear it, you'll give it away because it's cluttering the earth. It's her passion now. She says, go classic, a little expensive if you have to, but get one. Don't buy all the colors cheap, and then you throw it away. So clothes. Number three, containers, Tupperware. <laughs> Mga forlock, forlock na yan. Alam mo ba yung forlock? My Visayan helper, she's been with me 13 years. She always says, I said, Lorena, pakitago mo yan. Well, yes, ma'am, ipoporlak ko yan. Anong porlak? Ah, ma'am, yung porlak. One, two, three, four. Porlak? Ah, yung bagong... What's the name of the product? Huh? Lock and lock. Sa kanya, porlak. Eh, generic. But it works, right? I understand her. That's so true. How many of you have Tupperware that's already broken and melted, but it's still there? Is Tupperware still alive? Yeah. Do you know that they will replace it? Yeah. They do. Show them the item. They will. They will. Sentimental items. Baby tooth, umbilical cord, booties, hair. First shoe of the baby. Nandun, yung white shoe. Yung iba, they even dip it in bronze. Diba? Uh, when, you know? Number five, tools and gadgets. Can openers, bottle openers, pliers. Number six, grooming gadgets. You want me to go back? Oh, sige. Basta you stay until the end, lock the doors. 
tools and gadgets, pliers. By the way, ladies, you don't have discussion time, so you just throw a question. By the way, if you have a question, can you send it over here to the table of Patty and Gina so that I can address it within the 12, I mean the time frame. Oh, pwede na. Number six, grooming items. How many hair dryers do you need? How many roller brushes? How many bottles of spray and oil and makeup removers? Rollers, hot roller, cold roller, Velcro roller, lahat ng classing roller, di ba? You're laughing, but it's all there under the, what? Bathroom cabinet. Hobbies, sports. Who among you keep your tennis racket but you never naman played tennis? Bumili lang kayo ng racket. Boots, rubber shoes. Ah, so many things. Number eight is furniture. Number nine are samples and souvenirs. Love this. Yes, you check in the hotel. Your husband wants to take a bath, but by the time he takes a bath, there's no more shampoo. There's no more lotion. Honey, walang sabon. Ay, nasa maleta ko na. Humingi ka na lang dun sa housekeeping, sabihin mo, wala pa. Liar. Oh, di ba? We collect, collect, collect the shampoo, the lotion, and then we keep it for very long. By the time you smell it, it smells like what? Expired na siya. So, collectors of lotions. I love these things, especially when you go to Japan. Because they really put yung useful. Sachet, you open it, serum. Sachet, two, water. Three, cream. Diba? So Japan, so you use it. It's good for travel. But you know, ladies, if you're not going to use it, this is what I do. I bring a Ziploc and I collect those that are not used. Don't go stealing in the housekeeping cart. <laughs> huh? Yung naga housekeeper, naga ayus ng bed dun ka sa labas. I know that. I used to work in Peninsula Hotel for 10 years. When I do my rounds, I see what you do. May CCTV. Halata. Or kunyari, you know, you're passing, then you're getting na. Okay. Number 10, toys, chairs that cannot be chairs. Why toys? You keep toys of your kids who don't even like them anymore because you think you will give it to your apo. Correct? Yeah. Well, God bless you, and I hope your apo will like it. But here is the problem with goods and stuff. Look at the Bible. For me, I like to bring in the Bible. For those of you who are here for the first time, we use the Bible. It says, as goods increase, anything, food, clothing, jewelry, so do those who consume them. What does it mean? To what benefit are they to the owner except to look at them? Just look. You know, you come in, you look. You come in, you look. How many of you are saving your special towel that you bought in the white sale? In fluffy, white, nice, first-class towels in the cabinet. How many have special towels? Linen, yes. Silverware. Nice plates and nice glasses, but you don't use them every day. How many of you are like that? You use the Corel because it will never break. It's nothing. I use Corel. But you use Corel because it never breaks and you're afraid that the maid will break the nice Mikasa or whatever, right? So you keep it in the cabinet. Ladies, listen to me now. You must go home right now at 12.30 and bring out all those brand new towels, have them washed, Put them in all your bathrooms. Get the linen, the one that has millions of counts. Ilang counts yan, Gina, yung maganda? Five million counts. Yung when you go in, you feel like cotton. And then, you use it and throw or give away all the old towels na matigas na, frayed and holes. Why? If you die tonight, guess who will use your towels? The new wife. No way. No way. Today we start a revolution. The revolution is the wives of today will use 
Class A. Yes. Agree? Bring out the goblets, the silver, the plates. At kung mabungi-bungi yung plato na yan, sorry na lang. But my gosh, ladies, use it. Use your silver, use your glass. Don't let her use it. She doesn't deserve it. You shop for it, you use it. And yung towels na yan for the guest, anong guest? Wala naman kayong guest. Ayaw nyo ng guest, di ba? Okay, towels with the best softener, put it in your bathroom, the one in your floor, yung towel sa floor, yung butas-butas na yan, bigay mo na sa aso, you put the best there. It's in your house anyway. Who are you saving it for? Today, tonight, you're going to embrace the best pillow. Why do you have brand new pillows in the cabinet? And you're using the pillow na, you know, May amoy amoy na. So tonight, today, we have the revolution of women to women. We use the best for ourselves. God gave it to you. Don't keep it in the closet. Keep that closet empty just to store things you need. Are you excited to use your towel? Yeah. <laughs> Uy, totoo yan ha. Tama na. Yung Corel na yan. Enjoy the plate. I use Corel for breakfast just so that you know. Okay, Matthew 6, 19 to, 11, to 21. Let's read together. O oh, diba? For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Ladies, you know, me, my life... I, I want it to be purposeful. I don't want it to be burdened and loaded down with so much stress. I don't want to be worried about things. And so, when I walk into a mall, my purpose is, Lord, I'm here to buy medicine mercury. Yesterday, this happened. But I know I'm in mercury for a reason. Okay? So make me aware, not of things, but of people. Let me look at them in the eye. So, I get a card from the senior lane. Inirapan po ako ng senior. Kasi yung senior number, shorter yung line. Di ba Mercury may senior? Senior na po ako. Uh, promise. <laughs> okay. Bago ang card ko. Mm. Now, I get the senior number, and then I see the other number for regular. You can also. So I go, ah, let's see who's first. Then, but I'm looking at faces, I'm smiling at people, and then people are like, on my left, I overheard the girl say, Grabe, tignan mo yan, oh, nagsisigurado. <laughs> so, of course, I felt flattered. <laughs> you can feel insulted, but I felt flattered. Okay, so I said, ay, parang mabilis ang senior, balik yung regular. <laughs> then I went to the senior. But this is what I mean, when you have too much clutter in your life, you have no time for people, right? Clutter can be a list of things to do. You're in a hurry. You don't care. I have to buy medicine. I have to deposit in the bank. Then I have to go buy this, go to the laundry. If I'm not aware, the Lord's purpose in my life, that day would have been gone. So I'm in the senior lane. And then, Aldrin, I have Suki 9 Mercury, alabang eh. Oi, Ricky, kumusta, Rose? I'm ganyan ako eh, masyadong mapapel. Okay, <laughs> para mabilis. And then, I start ordering my things, and on my left, I just felt a woman and two women, they were like this. So me naman, hi. Please sleep a seal, because I cannot sleep sometimes, sleep a seal. Then she goes, you're senior ba? And I said, yeah, I'm senior na. Ah, how nice naman. But why, can you talk to my sister? She said, because she's so depressed. I said, what's the connection? Maybe because I was so jolly. So I said, you were depressed. Why are you depressed? Yeah, I'm buying all the medicine so that I can be... Oh, then you know what? When my senior card came out, she said, Cynthia, you know what? You, have, you and me have the same name. Made me hug her. I hugged her and I said, Cynthia, this is not an accident. God wants me to tell you he loves you. Oh boy. 
there was drama in Mercury. <laughs> Super drama, you know why? Everybody was listening. I forgot, you know, my voice gets loud. God loves you, you're depressed. Is it about the heart? Ganun pa ako, ang kapal ko, no? If it's about a man, a husband, cheat of the day, the two ladies, Leslie and Cynthia, heard about the love of God, heard about hope, you know, heard about, heard about things that they never heard before. They're so shocked that there's a woman willing to talk to their heart. And that's what I mean by when you're not cluttered, you know, clutter, about, clutter is even your list of things to do, your, your agenda for the day. You know, yesterday I had seven things to do, but at the end of the day, I knew there was a purpose in Mercury Drug Alabang. I praise God. I really thank God for those women. And they're going to, in fact, we're being invited to Romblon, where they're from, to talk to a small group there about the love of God. Because there's no CCF Romblon yet. So maybe that was God's way, okay? Don't you see? When you're not cluttered, you can do His purpose. Clutter, the danger of clutter is that it will not only cost you one time. Clutter will not only cost you once, it costs you many times over. Example, buy a car. I know there are car collectors and husbands here. Don't raise your hand because they will know who your husband is. <laughs> they collect the car. They buy the car. Then they have to have a warehouse to store the car. Then they have to have a mechanic to fix the car. Then the car breaks down, then they have to buy a part. So one time, no, definitely not. So now let's go into what are the hot spots of clutter in your home, in your home. Let's look quickly. You have kitchen. Kitchen is one of the number one spots. You have many appliances that you do not need on the counter. Or you have double. You know, you buy more toasters, you buy more uh, microwaves a lot. What else? Garage. A garage is no longer a garage because there's no more car inside. <laughs> the cars are parked outside, tama? Under the bed. Guilty? Do you know psychology says if you have things under your bed, you know it's there and it will bother you and you will not sleep well because it's clutter. Cabinets, messy cabinets. Picture kayo nung picture, baka magle-lecture na kayo sa bahay, sa helpers nyo, ha? Hmm, very good. Banyo. This bathroom was an unused bathroom. This was the do not enter banyo. Kaya pala. What about your desk? What about your extra rooms? And even your cars. I know many of you hide things in the car. You tend to give it away, but you never do. Closets, shelves, so many things, right? Clutter weighs us down. Clutter is like being overweight. Physically and emotionally, it weighs you down. Thinking about it, that broken washing machine has been in my garage for so long. You will waste time. It will take space. It will take money. And your energies are depleted. When you have clutter, it really, really is terrible. Why did I get into this? One day, I happened to chance into a book called The Clutter's Last Stand by Don Aslett. He's an author in America. I don't know how that book appeared in my hands. I read it. I read it for three hours. About 20 years ago, after chapter 5, I could not sleep. I put the book down and I started applying the principles he was teaching me. When Joby woke up, there were like 8 to 10 boxes in the corridor, taped, and nobody could touch it with markings. Donate, sell, throw. And he came out and said, did you get anything of mine? I said, oh no, promise, your things are safe. Your things are safe. So, clutter slows us down. It has proven to depress us. It can rob you of joy, space, effort, that otherwise that effort could have been put into something better and personal. What do I mean? If I say, hey, can we go out Saturday? No, because I'll be fixing my house, general cleaning, and then I have to do the wash. Uh, okay. You know, instead of, no, because Saturday I want to spend time with the kids, take them out, 
and enjoy a movie. Many of us spend our free days doing stuff. Look at Webster. Webster says, clutter is disorder. When you hear the word clutter, it means disorder. And this means that we operate in confusion. Remember, it doesn't have to be messy. But if it's over excess, many things, it is confusion. And what does the Bible say about confusion? Very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. That God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace and not confusion. When you have peace, you cannot be confused. When you're confused, you cannot have peace. So if you are a clutter-minded person, something is wrong spiritually, which is why I want those boxes now, with some help from some friends, to be brought forward, because I will be showing you right away how to declutter. But look at 2 Peter. Actually, can I borrow a Juliet? 2 Peter 2.19. A man is a slave of whatever has mastered him. Do you understand this? If shopping is your, oh, I get, my, I get a thrill. It's your master. If Netflix, when you're going home, you're so excited, I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch on my teleserie Korean novella. That's your master. If you're excited to go home because you want to fix and fix and fix, that's your master. If you're excited to enter a store because you're going to collect, that's your master. Remember the saying, a man is a slave of whatever has mastered him. So that includes smoking, eating, and any kind of anything that masters you. If you are a person who needs flattery, you need to be flattered to be happy, that's your master. If you're a person who, who's so dependent on a perfect husband, your husband has to be perfect. If he's not, you're going to make a big scene. You're mastered by that. So be very careful. So where do we start? We don't want to be confused. We don't want to be stressed. We don't want our cortisol levels to go up and down. We don't want to be overweight. We want to be happy. Where do we start? Yeah, can I have those boxes, please? Now, there must be a system, right? I'll just put it here. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Can... Yeah, it's very light, promise. Yeah. So just put throw here the first box. Now, the size of the box means a lot. These are the actual sizes of boxes that are good when you declutter. Why? Look how easy. Diba? How easy to carry. Correct? If you get a balik bayan box, and you, thank you, sir, and you fill it up with things, diba? Naku, return. May ibig sabihin yan. Now, you cannot carry it, so it has to be you can carry it to the car or to the person you're going to donate it to. But where do we start? And how do we start? Nag blackout? Is it a blackout? Oh, mine hang, nag hang lang. So, where do we start and how do we start? I have a black screen. Maybe the battery? Let's try manual. Nope. Uh, the magician's coming. I love this guy. He's my you know, magician. There's a story of Air Force, uh, a jet a plane that was carrying very precious cargo to Japan from Hawaii. When it was flying from Hawaii to Japan, one engine broke down. Seven crew members at stake. And the pilot said, the only way for us to make sure we land is to lighten our load. We cannot land safely because we are heavy. We are loaded, so we're going to just keep enough fuel to reach Tokyo. But we have to dump all our fuel and some cargo out the door. We need to lighten the air, the craft, the aircraft. They made it to Tokyo, seven lives were saved. But they needed to let go of precious things to save lives. Ladies, that's, that's what cluttering is all about. When we are focused on stuff and things and accumulations and keeping up with the Jonases or the Cruises and whoever, when we have to take the trip because our friend took the trip, when we are obsessed with being better than the rest, 
you forget. You forget that life, relationships are more important. And so that's the most important thing. They had to let go of it. They had to let go of it. And so, where do we start and how do we start? We start small. We do a small job first. Maybe you can tackle that little drawer in your side table. You will use the system I'll teach you, but you can start with a little drawer. Or maybe the smallest bedroom in the house. Or maybe just the dining area. Or one table, the, the messiest table you have. Start small. You see where I'm going? Okay? Because when you start small, you, you do it easily. And then you get encouraged. Oh, I did it. I know the system. And I know how to do it. I can tackle something better. So, look at the boxes that I have for you. The first, let me, let me fix it. The first box here is called the throw box. Okay? Why throw? Because here, will you, okay, this is how you're going to do it. If it's your closet, let's do something practical. If it's your closet, you get the large blanket. That's what I do. You put it on your floor, or if your bed is, is really a large bed, you put the blanket on your bed. And take, you know, Marie Kondo did not start this. 20 years ago, I taught this. <laughs> Honest, there's file, promise. I said, take everything out of your closet at once. All the hanging items. Take it out, put it on the bed. All. Don't leave anything. All the folded clothes, put it on one side. But where Marie and I disagree is her style. Her style says, get all the garments in the whole house. No. No. You know why? Overwhelming. You notice that she has to come back for weeks and weeks to check on them. So you deal with one closet at a time. Your closet first. Put everything there. Folded clothes, underwear, you know, up and down. Everything, all the spanks, ilan bang spanks mo? All the everything, stockings, socks, everything, put it on one pile, but organize it. I don't, I don't believe in that pile. If socks, socks, underwear, underwear, why? So you already have a semi-segregated pile to look at. Is this serious? This is exciting. I'll tell you, if you can do this, it will feel like you lost 20 pounds in one day. That's how I felt when I decluttered my closet 20 years ago. So, you're going to decide, touch the item once, I agree, look at it one time. Make sure you have a mirror. How many of you have put on that same dress over and over again, and every time you put it on, you always go, yuck. Then you hang it back and you put it back. You hate it, right? But you say, maybe I'll lose 20 pounds and it will look better. Hello, 20 pounds? Even I cannot lose 20 pounds. So, you know what? I'll tell you one thing. I don't want to advertise, but I love shopping in one place. Why? It's my one-stop shop. What I did, I got rid of almost everything. And I made my own idea of my classics. And I went to a store. I don't want to say it because they might think I'm making sip sip, but it's true. I went to SM. And I just found everything there. I live near South Mall. And South Mall is my little toy store. Why? Because the girls know me. I go there and I say, I want this, 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 and it's there. You don't need to go expensive. Boutique stores are nice, but you cannot really spend that much, right? So declutter. Hold that dress once and really say, oh my gosh, I tried this 10 million times, never again. Then decide to throw, to donate, or what? Now, what will you throw? You throw if it's broken. You throw if it's a missing pair. What do I mean? Yung sapatos mo na yan, na hindi mo mahanap yung pair, you move three times na to three condominiums, but you carry the shoe with you. Why? You are praying, Lord, sana lumabas yung kaliwa. It will never come out. Wala na po. Just get a new pair. Throw the missing pair. What else? Outdated. You know, things you always say, ay, babalik yung bell bottom. Bumalik nga, pero iba na. 
Yung bell bottom mo, mahahalata na super luma. Let it go. Let it go. Ugly. It's just not nice. Come on. You have clothes in your closet that are like panahon ng mm, kopong-kopong. That's her word, ha? not mine. So, anything you throw. Why? It's too embarrassing to give. It may be a nice dress, but if you give it, the girl will not even know how to smile when she receives it. So, throw. Okay? Okay, next. Donation box. Donate it. Is that what I have? Do I have a donation? Let's be organized, Cindy. Okay. Donation. What do we put here? Useful to someone else. You know, I was gifted just yesterday. Um, this is a perfume that I don't buy because it's very mahal. But this wonderful woman, you know, she said, Cindy, Cindy, I want to give you something. And when I opened it, it was the perfume that I love. Thank you. Diba? But she gave you something that, you know, you will love. And I, I praise God, it was something I love. So useful to someone else. Repairable. Halimbawa, it's just like broken, but you know it can be repaired. Then you can donate it to somebody who's willing to repair it. Right? What else? It's wrong size, wrong color. Not your style. Many times we made a mistake. We bought a shoe at the end of the day. It fitted us perfectly. When we went home the next morning, we put in the shoe. Parang Cinderella's daughter, stepdaughter, hindi na pumasok yung pako. Why? Because we bought the wrong size. You can donate it or you may sell it. Tired of it. It's a beautiful coat, but you're so tired of it. Excess. Sobra, sobra na. You have too much of it. You have too much of it, donate it. Okay? What else? What do we do next? We are going to sell. Now, what do you sell? You sell things that are of value. You don't want to give it away because you, you made ipon for it. It's a little mahal. Maybe it's a tea set. Maybe it's a, a, a beautiful bedsheet set. You sell it. But this is what you must do if you have a sell box. That's for your garage sale. The moment you hold the item, you must tape a price on it right away. Do not dream of putting it in the box and planning to put a price a week or a month later because you never will. And you will have a problem doing a garage sale. Then you put it in the box and seal it. Why did I say seal it? Because many people like to buy from your household help. They will open na overnight. So seal it, okay? Now, last box, box four, the return. Why return? I put return or relocate. Many times when you declutter your home, you will find something that doesn't belong in your bedroom. Example, you will find a plancha and a nice steam iron that you bought in America or wherever, and it's in your bedroom, hidden in a closet, and you realize, dito pala siya, and dito pala, tatlo na yung plancha sa baba. I should have known where it was. So, return it or relocate. Now, what are these? They're not in their proper place. So you must have a place for everything. You must have it where it's used. How many of us are sitting in the toilet and we run out of toilet paper? And then you're texting your helper, Dai, padala ka ng toilet paper dito. <laughs> text, text na lang tayo, tapon mo dito. No, that's just an exaggeration, but even towels should be where you are bathing. Toilet paper, tissue should be near where you use them. This is the rule of thumb. You must have a place for everything. My kids will never ask me, Mom, where's the scissor? Where's the tape? Where's the scar? Never. I train them in homeschool. Everything has a home in this home. Ultimo paper clip, pen tell pen. You know where it is. You know where to put it back. Do not ask me that question. So now, ang sarap. They go. And when I need a scissor, I know it's in its home. If it's not there, wow. Diba? Meaning somebody is cluttering his desk with my scissor. Return it always to its owner. How many of you have borrowed the book right now and you still did not return? Time to return. Okay? So did you get it, the system? Easy, right? So by that time, you know what to keep. Your clothes will be less because you will only fit what fits you. Now, about clothes. Try to wear clothes that will 
somehow enhance your shape. By enhance, I don't mean body fit. Try to wear clothes not exactly your size. Buy some, this is another seminar. But anyway, buy something a little bit over your size. Like, I usually buy clothes that are a little bigger because I always want to be comfortable. I don't want people to see the shapes around myself. They'll be distracted. They won't listen to the decluttering seminar. <laughs> they will be saying, but ganyan niya? No, no, no. Mga baba, eh. Okay? So, pick clothes that fit you. So, after you finish your pile of clothes, make sure the clothes fit you, the color scheme fits you. If you need advice, you know, I will give you my email address. <laughs> and then I will tell you what fits your color. Because see, there's also nice colors for you. You know, it's not always green, it's not always black, it's not always gray. You can go pink. Today, I made pink para bagay sa out decors. Who wants to know how to be paper clutter free? I devised a scheme. It's called free. Free. Free stands for when you get anything, file it right away. File it right away. Where's the thing I asked to be brought here? Uh, sir, the little white notebook and the Ziploc? Oh, it's here. File it right away. What do I mean? If you get a, BP, a BDO bill or a BPI bill, note the date in your calendar when it's due, the amount, and then file it. My, my bills that are to be paid are always on a top shelf, one folder. So it's always there. I never file it yet until it's paid. So file it, okay? Next, recycle it. If it's an invitation, take down the note of, of the date, put it in a notebook. I like using notebooks because for me, I still like to see paper and ball pen. I don't like using my phone because I don't check the dates on my phone. And then you recycle the paper if you have to. And if you get an invitation, enter the information right away. Enter it. Like, when is that wedding? When is that party? When is that occasion? Put it down and write the date and see the outfit na. Kasi minsan you say, ano ba yung outfit? Ano ba yung color? Everybody take it down, put it in your planner right away. Okay? Got it? Are we all like that? We forget now we arrived there in gray and dapat blue. Mali, mali. Ibang wedding yon. Speaking of ibang wedding yon, one time, we walked into a wedding and we were a little late. It was in Santuario. Because we had to be there. We were invited. Finally, now the priest said, you may now kiss the bride. Nung nag-kiss na sila, sabi namin ni Joby, sino yan? <laughs> Hindi yan. Mali yung wedding. Oh my God, it was the wrong wedding. It was an hour earlier. So we went to the wrong wedding. So you see how guilty we are? I'm being transparent. One time, somebody texted me, please go to the wake of so-and-so. It's here, here, here in this room. And you know, I trusted my memory. Diba ganun tayo? Oh, I'll remember that. Password, I'll remember that. My password, I, re I forget it after one minute. So I remember that. So. I go to the funeral parlor. At that time, my mother was still alive, and I go. I look into the room, ah. and my mother was saying, Mama. and she was saying, so I go. Then I go to the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> wrong room, wrong room. I didn't know who that man was. But, you know, because I did not put it down. You have to put even in the funeral, what room? Kasi mga malim, umiiyak ka pa dun, mali pala. Hi! And my mother called me pa a bad name. Hoy! Ganyan. Parang, oh, so insulted. Anyway. Every day, spend five minutes. What do I mean? Every day, ladies. If you want to be paper-free and trash-free, you have your handbag, right? Five minutes. Open your bag. Unload everything. You have a trash can, get rid of the little toll, the little recibo, open your billfold, fix the bills, get out all those little papers, 
you know, um, use pills, throw them, and then fix your bag for the next day. Do you know what? Fixing your bag for the next day does so much for a good night's sleep. Believe you me. You wake up and you are ready. Five minutes it takes to declutter your handbag. Are you going to practice that today? So I have a tip. Many of you, are you, are you bored na? Ay salamat. Because if you're bored, I won't be invited na here. Every day, this is what I want you to do until you learn. I want you to have a Ziploc in your bag. This I invented. This is not in the book of Don Aslet. I'll tell him to add it, or I'll make my own book na lang. In your bag, this is empty, right? Every time you open your bag today, and you put lipstick, right? Anything you use, you put it here. Compact. <laughs> the ball pen. The one ball pen, not the 22. Put it here. The tissue. The wet ones. Anything you use today, until tonight, put it in the Ziploc, okay? When you get home, open your bag. Bring out the Ziploc. Then you will see, why did I carry around that today? Why did I bring the whole house? When all I need was this. So, do this for several days. It might change. Maybe you'll need a checkbook one day. Maybe you'll need an extra bill one day. But if you use this method, your bag will become less heavy. There was a lady who went to the chiropractor because she was having severe frozen... So sh sh yon, yon. And then he said, ma'am, can I see your bag? He got it. Ah, uh, that's the problem. So we will do a little massage. And now, ma'am, can you carry your bag in the other side muna? Para magpantay. That's just a joke. But your bags can really dislocate your shoulders. So again, be very careful. This is my saying. A place for everything and everything in its place, okay? Everything must have its place. And look at those glass jars. Remember I told you, you can use them. But use them the same way. Don't make halo-halo. If you look, look at it, it looks nice, right? Same color of ball pen, everything connected. It looks doesn't look cluttered. Now, how do we stay clutter-free? How do we stay clutter-free? Let's say you're doing this already, right? Have a place for everything. Put items near you where you use it most. Have ample sized garbage containers all the time. Make it a practice to clean as you go. Meaning when you leave your area, clean it up and go. Don't go back to it later. And practice the one in, one out rule. If you want to buy a pair of shoes today, ladies, I suggest you get rid of one. If you can, right away. Okay, so practicing this will help you stay clutter-free. Six, go out only with the money you need, okay? With real friends, not spending friends. Plan your trips. Plan your trips. Don't just go out with no plan. Keep a list. Have a list so that you don't go out of your way to buy things you don't need. When in doubt, do not buy. Don't rush. Just don't rush. Keep a budget, okay? Now, ladies, I'm entering into another box, a box that I cannot bring on stage. I'm sorry, but this box is invisible. It is what I call my emotional box. Why do I call it emotional? These are things that even if I look at you, and even if you look at me, you don't see it but I carry it, and you carry it. What's in it? Past hurts. Up to now, you do not forget when your husband cheated on you. Up to now, you say you forgive, but you replay it in your mind. Up to now, the death of your spouse, you haven't released it to the Lord. Maybe your, your child died suddenly, you're still, still hurting you, a sister, a brother, Sentimental things that you keep. You know, you keep sentiments. You harbor it. Your broken dreams, dreams that you dreamed about when you were young. Wala pa. Hindi pa nangyayari. Painful breakups. I've had a few. 
I've had a few. I had a boyfriend who, who never told me that I was not the only girlfriend. And the only time he told me was a year later when he said he made a decision to marry the other girlfriend. I knew when the wedding would be. I knew where the wedding would be. I was working at the pen at that time, and I had a plan. I said, I would bring my car to the church, and I would ram my car into Santuario de San Jose until I hit both of them in the altar. <laughs> You're laughing, but I really wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. I didn't know I was the second girlfriend. And then he'll just tell me he'll marry that other one. And I was already how old? 24, 25. I was banking on him. You know, I remember I would just hear a name like his, and I would like cry all over again. Painful breakups, unexplainable. A death of a loved one that you didn't expect. Gossip, invented stories about you, exaggerations that insulted you, that broke your heart, that you cannot even prove that it's not true because these people will even say, I have, you know, everybody says so, you're like that. Abuse, abuse done to you verbally, physically, or things done to you or to your own body by yourself that you regret or by someone else. This is the box I'm talking about. The box that you cannot throw away. The box that you cannot sell or donate. You can't even return it to sender. It's a box that's in here. Unseen by many, covered by good clothes, good hair, whatever. You look good, but the box that hurts is there. And no one can fix it. No one will take it from you. Even if you want to give it to somebody, it bothers your mind, it breaks your heart. It really hurts. You know, when you replay an event that happened, and I'm thinking of one right now, I, it still brings tears to my eyes. You know, Matthew 6.21 says, For where your treasure is, there is your heart also. What are we saying here? You know, when you treasure the pain, when you treasure the hurt, when you treasure the things that people did to you, and you just want to, you know, just embrace it and remember it and keep being a pity, pity party person. And then you blame God, you blame others, you embrace the pain, you struggle with God, you wrestle with God, you blame him, you blame your husband, you blame your sisters, you blame anyone but yourself. You wrestle with God. And you know who's your God? For where your treasure is, that's your God. You are your God. When you never want to stop wrestling, and giving things back to him. Second Corinthians says, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are transient. Ladies, we're all aging. It's all going down. That's why my makeup is all pataas. <laughs> Sabi ng makeup artist, ma'am, pataas mo yan, pataas mo yan, lahat pataas. Kasi lahat po pababa ng pababa. <laughs> Di ba, kanta yun? So, we're all aging, no? You know, we just have to freshen up our faces the best we can. But those are only outside remedies. Because for the things that are seen are transient. You young ones there, dadating din kayo dito. Promise. But the things that are seen, unseen, are forever. So you must invest on forever. On the eternal. Look at Colossians 3.2. Set your minds on things above. Why? Not on things on earth. And there is a continuation. Because things on earth will never last. Set your mind on things above. For that is where God is. Who sits at the right hand of God. Interceding for you. Are your, is your heart breaking? You have a sentimental box. Set your heart on things above. Because these things on earth, God will take care of. The saying says, at the foot of the cross, there is justice. At the foot of the cross, the guy or woman who cheated you, who hurt you, has to answer to God. Not to you. 
you leave that person to God. Your pain, your sorrow, your regrets, don't blame God. In fact, God caused it to happen so you could go to Him. You know, all of us are sinners. We all have sinned. And we all have fall short of the glory of God. Years ago, I was working in the pen. I was an ideal daughter. I was rising in the ranks, rising in the ranks. I was pure. I was a virgin. I was so good. I was raised by good parents. I was never abused. I had never had a bad background. But look, even when you desire to be good, you make wrong decisions. And so a man came and decided that he wanted to court me. And I was carried away and I left home. I became a prodigal daughter. And my good values turned to immoral values. I started to live a life that was breaking my body. That was breaking my body. Whoever lives earliest will have to pay a fine. <laughs> I'm just joking. I can see somebody saying goodbye. Anyway, my body was breaking. My heart was breaking. After three years, this man never married me. And my heart was broken. Ladies, we all have sinned. And we all have fallen short of the glory of God. My father's heart was broken. My mother's heart was broken. Imagine I was already the top salesperson of the Philippines. The first female winner. Tops award. I had a trophy. The first time any woman won it. I gave it up for that man. He called me crazy. Yeah, love makes you stupid. Right? I was successful in the pen. I was rising. If I stayed there, maybe I could have been somebody by now. But no. Look at what it says in 1 Peter 2, 24. For he, Jesus, bore our sins where? In his body on a tree. Why? So what? So that we could die to our sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. So in that relationship, somebody told me this verse. And I felt that my body had been bruised and broken by this guy who was, had no plans for me. And so I said, Lord, would you take care of me? I'm so heartbroken. I found out that he had another girl. How? May blush on dito. Ako naglalaba eh. Hindi ko naman kakulay yun. I never wear that color. And when I approached him, he denied it and said I was imagining things. I'm sorry, pag naglalaba po ako, wala akong imagination. I know lipsticks and I know blush on. That's my forte. So I was wounded. In Matthew 11, 28 to 30 says, Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you what? Rest. Take my yoke upon you, upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls and my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Ladies, what am I saying? My dreams were broken. My heart was broken. My body was broken. I had no job to go back to because he told me to quit. I had no money to my name. And then I find out that I wasn't the only one after three years. How do I go home? How do I say sorry? How do I fix my life? But thank God I heard that God loved me and that my sins could be forgiven if I gave my boxes of sins to God. The invisible box. The only thing that can clean that box is when you surrender your life to the Lord. Because the Bible says, He died for all our sins. He died on a tree for your sins and mine. That box can be emptied only by the blood of Christ. And you know what? If you humble yourself and you say, Lord, like I was approaching 30, brokenhearted, no home to go to, I said, Lord, I will crawl home. I hope my mom and dad accept me. And they did. And the Lord turned my life around. From an immoral woman who I thought God would never ever care to use, he dare use me for such a time as this. And it's all because, really, it's not about me, it's really about God. You know, I'll tell you a story. I'm a real estate broker, and there have been years of empty. And yes, I'm sad when I see people becoming multi-billionaires, selling left and right. But you know what I do? I know my passion is for lost souls. And I pray that the people who are here, the 70 of you, or 70 or 80 new ones, never leave with your emotional box unforgiven. I want you 
to decide today to give all of that to the Lord because He loves you, He died for you. He wants to make use of you. And out of a, a vessel like mine, so dirty, He can use you for great things. For a woman standing beside Mercury. For a man standing by a tree, watching a tree grow. I just sit, did that last week. A man standing by the tree, watching a tree grow. I said, sir, why are you doing? I'm watching this tree grow. I said, why? Because I planted it 30 years ago. I feel old. And I said, are you sick? Yeah. So this tree will outlive me. And I shared the gospel with this man. He lives in Canada. And today he says, when you go to Canada, I want to attend CCF Canada. Ladies, there's life. There are people who need you. Things don't need you. The things you have cannot embrace you, I promise. Even your husband cannot be perfect. So you need to find your perfection in Christ. So I would ask all of us now as we close to bow down and to remember these few words. And I ask you to close your eyes so you can concentrate on what I'm going to say. There is nothing too large that your great God cannot forgive. There is nothing so dirty, done in the dark, that he cannot clean. There is nothing so broken. I don't care how small the pieces are. There's nothing so small and broken that he cannot put back together. There's nothing impossible with our God. There's nothing about age that will make you useless. It's not about how young or how old you are. And this is not about religion. This is not about your way to heaven or your style of going to heaven. This is about the one true God who gave us Jesus Christ. He is not just a prophet. He is the Son of God who died on a tree for the forgiveness of sins. He rose again. And this is why he rose again. So as you bow your heads and close your eyes, he wants you to rise up in this life. He doesn't want you to live this mediocre, sad, broken life. He wants you to live here with the joy of the Lord in your heart, forgiven forever. No one will remind you of that sin. It is over if you give it to him. You are whole by the blessings of God. You are healed in the spirit and you are forgiven. Remember this, if the devil reminds you of the dirty deed you did, you tell him, I am a child of God covered by the blood. Get behind me, Satan. You have no place in my soul. And then you say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Make me the woman you want me to be. Use me in any small way, O oh Lord, because this box I carry is too heavy. I can no longer carry it, Father. Get it from me. And in replacement of that, I say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me, for making me new. And just like any person in this room who was broken, new stop, discarded, forgotten, remind me that you have never forgotten me, that you never sleep, that you think of me, Lord God. And Lord, thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you for today. Thank you for making my life brand new. And Lord, I leave that empty box on the stage Take it with you, and I no longer carry it on my shoulder. Praise God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. If you ever need me, ladies, I want you to make sure, these are things you already read, so I'm just going through it. I want you to make sure you know where to find me on Facebook. Send me a message. I will answer you. And if it's kind of long, send me an email. I promise to read it and answer you. God bless you. I love you. Since before you go, thank you so much. Yes. We just have two short oh, questions. I like questions. Okay? Yes. That, that um, a lady sent. Number one is, how and when do you declutter the stuff of a loved one that Spe passed away? Especially the ones who passed away. Yes. Yeah. You know, I got that question also. How do I let go of these things that my husband left behind or my child? Uh, last, 
three weeks ago, this was a child who committed suicide and the mommy could not let go. And my answer is always, you know, prepare yourself, ask God to give you the grace to do it. There is no rush. There's no rush. Prepare your heart. And you know what? I, it, it's such a blessing, you know. We don't mind. You know, one time, uh, a very good friend gave a pair of shoes of her beloved husband to my husband. And we were not offended. We felt blessed. And uh, just about a few, four months ago, a very dear friend of mine, we were mentoring her, succumbed to cancer. And her daughter, who, who knows we loved her, sent me her, her, her nice walking shoes. And you know, of course, some of us say, diba, that's somebody who died. No, I don't care. She's the woman I love. In fact, when I wear it, I take a picture and send it to the daughter. The daughter is so happy and she cries. I said, I love your mom and thank you for this pair of walking shoes. You know, ladies, it's up to you when. It's when you're ready. The second question? Um, well, I, you sort of answered it, but I'll, I'll share it anyway. It says, what is the relationship of material clutter with spiritual clutter? Well, sometimes when you are over-collecting, and you are, your treasures are your materialistic things, it means there's some sort of an emptiness in you that you're not yet filled. Probably you need uh, you know, um, spiritual friends, Christians, who can give you affirmation. You probably have a, a bitter past that you need forgiveness for, and so you cover it up with things. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're spiritually dead or bad if you like beautiful things. So it's really a matter of the heart. Your heart knows and God knows when you're treasuring anything more than Him, then it becomes a spiritual issue. Okay.